All right, guys, we are here to talk about the Korg MS2000 synthesizer that I have been working on repairing and restoring over the last three or four weeks. Um, I originally bought this unit off of Reverb, um, and the gentleman said that the power port had become dislodged from the board and needed to be resoldered on. And that basically this synth was for the most part unused. So anyway, we worked out a price and I had it shipped here and opened it up. And yeah, he was right. You know, the power port had been knocked off the board. So um, I actually ordered a new part uh, from Syntar. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, S-Y-N-T-A-U-R, Syntar.com one of the best places for parts for synthesizers in the world. Really, probably the best. Um, good prices and quite a bit of inventory, and they're super knowledgeable and helpful. Um, anyway, put a new power port in, and um, yeah, she fired right up. Um, but that's not where we stopped. There was quite a bit more that needed to be done to get this thing into the shape that you see it in here. We whitened the keys. Um, you know, this unit had kind of been left to sit in the sun and the keys had, I would say, moderate yellowing. Um, so I gave them two treatments of whitening. Um, it's winter here in Austin, so um, don't have a lot of sunshine and don't have a lot of intense sunshine. So I spread it out over two days. If it would have been the summer, I could have pulled it off in one day. But anyway, um, the keys are as white as they're going to get. Uh, I think naturally anyway, this unit, I actually own this unit and, uh, um, you know, I've owned this. This is the first synthesizer I bought, not this one you're looking at, but I have one in my studio. First synthesizer I bought. And I, anyway, I think the keys are more of an ivory color on this one to begin with. They're not pure white. So, um, but those keys are as white as they're going to get. Um, and the tops match the sides, which didn't get any sunlight. So, um whatever yellowing there is, is is from age and not sunlight so um and as you can see they look pretty darn white so um we replaced all the uh translucent buttons here um these guys were pretty yellow kind of went out of order there i just want to show you how responsive the tech switches are um these these were yellowed and there was just no whitening them because it's translucent. You, you whiten them, but the deeper layers are yellowed. And you can whiten the heck out of the top layer, but the deep layers are still going to be yellow. And you can't get to them with any peroxide or anything. So this is as white as I could absolutely get these. I, did, I whitened them like five times. And that's, just, that's, that's it. That's as good as it gets. So uh, I replaced them. I bought these parts new from Parts as Parts, which is a Korg parts supplier. Another really good part supplier for, especially for Korg instruments. Um, I bought the last four, as far as I know, that are in existence. So uh, I hope whoever buys this appreciates the fact that I spent a good chunk of money just to make sure these look good. Um, we replaced one wood panel. One of these had sat in the sun and was bleached blonde. And nothing I did could restore the stain to match the other side. So I ended up stealing a panel off of mine and putting the bleach blonde on my unit that I use in my studio, which I've had for 20 years and it was my first synthesizer. It's kind of beat up anyway, so I don't really feel bad about uh, stealing the uh, wood panel from it and putting it on this. Now these have been sanded down, restained, top coated and waxed. Um, so both these wood panels are in really good shape on this unit. Overall, the unit's in fantastic shape. Um, there's a few blemishes. I'll show you in the photos. There's like a mark here, uh, some tiny little scratches in the back that are really hard to see unless you put a, you know, get the light just right. A tiny little mark on the front here. Um, this is, as far as I know, the best condition Korg MS2000 available for sale on the internet. Um, there's a gentleman in Australia who's got one that's in pretty darn good shape as well. Um, but I think this one's in better shape. And I actually also have the original Korg power supply for this. 
um, which the others, uh, a lot of the others you're going to see don't come with the original power supply. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see what else did we do. We obviously took everything apart and cleaned everything. All the buttons have been cleaned. All the knobs have been cleaned. Uh, the keys, I uh, took the, the pads off the board, cleaned. There, there were no dead keys to begin with, but since I had it open, I went ahead and cleaned the, the contacts and cleaned the pads and put it back together. So you should have no dead keys for you know a decade or so at least. Um, for as long as it'll last or whatever. Um, one thing I want to point out, these buttons here, they all sit on a uh, strip of tacky, sticky stuff uh, that holds them in place. And then you put the board on top of them, you know, from underneath, of course, and, you know, line it all up and secure the board in place. And then the buttons lock in place and they're nice and, you know, they're nice and firm. Some of them, however, the sticky tacky um, strip didn't really have its tackiness anymore. So, like this button is really firm, whereas this one slides back and forth. You can hear, you probably see that very slight. Does it affect the function at all? Not at all. I mean, these work flawlessly. I think if you hit them too fast, it kind of doesn't like it. But same with these, they slide a little bit. These two locked in real nice. These two, these two didn't. The only way I could fix that would be to super glue them down. Um, and I don't want to do that because if you ever want to take this apart and those are super glued down, then you're going to break them most likely when you try to get them out you're not going to realize they're super glued down and you won't be able to really clean the face plate like you should uh, with them in. So um, it, it really doesn't make a difference. I would have no problem with this if I was keeping this. There's just a couple that are wiggly, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm going to keep this video pretty short. Um, that's what basically what I've done to it. Um, let me at least talk a little bit about what the synthesizer is and what it can do. Um, if you're not familiar, this is the engine that the micro Korg is based off of. Uh, it's a four voice uh, polyphonic analog modeling synthesizer. Um, and it's known particularly really strong in the bass department. This, this synth, you can get some really thick, fat bass sounds out of it. Um, it's got a wonderful step sequencer um, that you can use to animate your sounds with. Two oscillators. Oscillator one can be saw, pulse, triangle, or sine, box, wave, noise, audio in, or uh, wave table. And there are, I believe I'm already in edit mode. So yeah, there are 64... Uh, different waves that you can use to choose from. This is set to, uh, this patch is set to mono. Here's a good example of the uh, step sequencer in action. I'm on a tiny little pair of speakers, so you probably can't, I don't think you're feeling the bass there, but, uh, really nice pads as well. Um, nice lead, sound effects, um. It's got, uh, of course, your filter, resonance, uh, your filter envelope, amp envelope, um, four different kinds of filters, 24 LPF, 12 LPF, 12 bandpass, and 12 high pass. Um, it's got an arpeggiator, up to four octaves, a couple of different patterns, forward, backward, alt-1, alt-2. Um, the it's got a virtual patch with four uh you can have four sources and destinations for uh 
you know, virtual patch bay, which I love. A lot of synths have that buried in a menu, and it's super annoying. Um, this one is right baked into the into the face here, so you can you can easily get into all the um, you know modulation sources and destinations, and uh, you know really get creative there without having to do any menu diving. It's got delay, uh, no reverb, but it has a really nice delay, stereo delay, uh, a cross delay. I forget what the other one is. It is. Uh, what's nice is you can kind of just wiggle a knob and then you go to that section and then you can just kind of go search around. Uh, so this is cross stereo delay, cross delay, and left right delay. So I believe left right is what you would call ping pong delay nowadays. Cross delay means that what's in the left channel is in the right and what's in the right is in the left. There's no ping ponging though. Um, and then the stereo delay is just a typical delay. And we got a pad, so you're not going to hear it super well, but let's just put a crazy feedback on there. And of course, you can get weird effects if you adjust the timing. Here we go. got a really nice phaser let's mess with the phaser here so uh edit we want to do i know on this unit that around like seven or six is going to be a real nice slow creep it's got a phaser ensemble and chorus I love the phaser on this unit. Now it's really strong, so we're gonna need some resonance, but. sequence or uh, step sequence or stuff. That's using the box wave for oscillator one. Now it's dual layer. You can have a single or dual layer. This is a this is a dual layer patch. So I can select which layer I want to edit. There's a couple different ways you can set up the, the, the uh, dual layer. You can just have every key is dual layer, or you could say you could split the keyboard and say, you know, I want one voice on this side for a bass instrument. And I want three voices on this side for pads. So in a live setting, that might be useful. Um, so it's either, you know, two two voices per per uh, uh, layer, or you can do one and three. Um, get some really cool sounds out of this unit when you start layering them. The basses are really, like I said, the bass on this is really killer. I'm hooked up to tiny speakers. You can't hear it, but this is kind of old fashioned now, but it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty good example of what you can do with the step sequencer. Thank 
Got a nice distortion on this unit as well. Um, arpeggiator, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Um, it's got a vocoder. Of course, I'm going to hook it up to a mic right now. That's a cool sound. I believe it's either... 8 or 16 band vocoder. I'll put it in the description once I look it up. It's an older unit, so the vocoder is not as hot as some of the newer units, like a, uh, um, a Mini Nova, for example. It has a really killer vocoder compared to this unit. Um, it's just newer technology, so it, it, that's why. Um, you know, obviously some older, older vocoders are really, really good too, but they're made specifically to do that you know roland uh roland has some of the better vocoders out there this one's still pretty you know it's good enough to play with i, I don't know that you're going to get some super useful intelligible vocoder sounds out of it but you can definitely get some some cool uh especially when you get into chords some some really cool uh sounding effects out of it um 128 patches uh you know in different banks of 16. These are all the factory patches from 20 years ago. The cool sound. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, I could go on for a while. Uh, what I will say is that this is a really good synthesizer to learn on. If you don't know anything about synthesizers, this is a really, really good one to learn on because you've got a ton of knobs. There's very little menu diving. Everything's explained. Um, the, the manual, which I'll include a printed manual, um, all the CZ controllers are spelled out so you can automate everything that you want to automate, you know, filter cut off. Uh, there may be a thing or two you can't automate, but for the most part, anything you want to automate, you can uh, in your DAW. So you can create some really cool sequences with this unit. Um, yeah, anyway, I mean, I'll let, I'll let you guys do your own research beyond that as far as to what the synth can do, but it's definitely cool, you know. Uh, I, I still use it in every production that I have. It's an older synth, but it doesn't mean you can't get super modern sounds out of it. You just, you know, you're going to need to do some patch editing and, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of bring what's, what, what's baked into the cake here up, up to, uh, you know, 2023, 2024. But, um, believe me, I mean, my, I, I use mine in every, every production, especially for basses especially for sound effects, um, and especially for pads, strings. There's some really nice strings. I actually have a different, um, there's alternate factory patches that you can download, and I think the one that in, that in my studio is started out with an alternate patch, and then, of course, I've changed them all from there. But anyway, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, 
I'll, I'll make a longer video at some point that, that I mean, I documented and, and video like all the stuff I actually did to this, but for now, here's just a video talking about it and I'm going to put it up for sale on Reverb. Let's see what happens. Thanks guys.